Mina, Kung Bunwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, coming at you with Job chapter 4, starting in verse 1. Then Eliphaz the Temanite answered and said, pausing there, Job had three good friends. They came to him in his time of trouble. And it says back in chapter 2, verse 13, So they sat down with him on the ground seven days and seven nights, and no one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his grief was very great. Biggest understatement possibly in the entire Bible. But yeah, they didn't even talk to him for seven days and seven nights because they were just, they were, they were trying to be good friends. They were trying to just like, we're not going to say anything. We're not going to try to um, comfort you with words. We're just going to be here for you. And at a time that bad, generally that is the best option. Um, nine times out of ten, I would say, silence in the middle of great grief and just your presence being there is the very best thing you can do. And then he proceeds to mess it up with the words he says, primarily because the words he says are wrong. Starting at verse 2, If one attempts a word with you, speaking to Job, will you become weary? But who can withstand himself from speaking? Surely you have instructed many, and you have strengthened weak hands. Your words have upheld him who is stumbling, and you have strengthened the feeble knees. But now it comes upon you, and you are weary. It touches you, and you are troubled. Is not your reverence your confidence, and the integrity of your ways your hope? Remember now, who ever perished being innocent? Or where were the upright ever cut off? Now, in the New Testament, perhaps, it's easier to see this. Because Jesus, the perfect one, suffered one of the cruelest deaths man has yet devised. Crucifixion. We have a word. Um, excruciating. Um, and if you trace that English word to its root... It comes from the Greek, whatever it means, to crucify, um, like ex crucio, something like that. Um, and yes, the uh, <laughs> incidentally, the um, the Harry Potter unforgivable curse, the um, crucio curse, also based on crucifixion. But excruciating means out of the cross. Um, a new word was needed to describe the incredible amount of pain that the victims of the cross felt. And he was perfect, he was just, he was innocent, and he suffered a death that bad and that horrible. Now granted, he did rise from the dead, but he still suffered that death. So yes, the innocent have perished, the upright have been cut off. Eliphaz could not have been more incorrect and more wrong. In fact, I want to say Asaph wrote a psalm talking about how sometimes the wicked seem to win and prevail and the just seem to stumble and fall and get defeated. And he was like, I almost lost heart and I almost lost faith until I realized, you know, ultimately the wicked are going to get what's coming to them. So Eliphaz had incredibly horrible counsel. And I do believe it's a lot due to the book of Job that we realize nowadays, hey, just because you're good, doesn't mean you're, everything's going to be perfect, you know, rosy, hunky-dory, you know, just because you live uh, a good, moral, sin-free life, and who among us hasn't sinned? Um, that doesn't mean, you know, just to use the general example, that doesn't mean Christians will always be healthy, Christians will always be wealthy, um, Christians can lose their jobs, Christians can be put out on the street, Christians can get cancer. They can get in car accidents. They can be paralyzed for life. Horrible things happen to decent people. And sometimes, uh, do I even need to mention the number of world rulers, politicians, generally wealthy, affluent men um, who are incredibly wicked and corrupt and they are they're pretty healthy and they're not losing their power or their wealth they're they're moving right along just you know punishing all the people that oppose them and doing whatever the heck they want so job this this book it, it's just it's a wonderful reminder that the bible understands and god understands uh that you know good people suffer and wicked people get away with stupid crap it, that is a part of this world and god hasn't changed that he he didn't he didn't stop uh, Cain from killing Abel. He, uh, he actively took David's child um, for his adultery with Bathsheba and his murder of her husband Uriah. 
And Jesus himself, God in the flesh, died a horrible death on the cross to pay the price for our sins, yes. And to do that, he suffered horribly. So, hor so good people absolutely suffer. So if you're in the middle of a hard time in this life, please do not think God has abandoned you. God is right there. And if, especially if you have kept your heart as sin-free as possible and you are living a devoted life to him, please remember God is with you. God is for you. And even if his way out doesn't surface in this life, you have all eternity in heaven to enjoy his presence and to be with him. So be encouraged and take heart. The best news isn't all the goodies we get down here. The best news is our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life and that we have him. He is our portion. That is the good news. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I love you. Be strong and of good courage and take heart. And God bless.